Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Jorge from the Big Band Podcast. I'm here with a special guest today, Ivan Rodriguez. Uh, my co-host and my, my partner in crime, Adrian, is, cannot be here with us today, but it uh, doesn't matter. We're still going to have some fun <laughs> with, a, with an interesting topic. As I was saying, my our guest host today is uh, Ivan Rodriguez. He is my friend. Um, he is a self-taught software engineer. Yeah. And uh, a fellow startupper. Um, and today, the topic today was actually pitched by him. The topic is the ethics of artificial intelligence. So, what's going on, man? Um, so, why, well, first of all, tell us a little bit about you. And then, you know, tell us why you're interested in the ethics, specifically the ethics of artificial intelligence. Okay, so I was, uh, since I was a little boy, I was uh, very interested in technology and how we can uh, make use of it uh, to make a better world. Yeah, and these last couple of years, I have been, I have been, had the honor of uh, being part of uh, more than a couple of startups. Yeah, some of them fail, some not. Yeah, but at the end, I see that there is this great potential for technology to, to automatize, uh, how can you say? Automatize. 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 Automatize the the problems that humans uh, have uh, on a daily basis, right? Yeah. So on one side, uh, there is a lot of work that humans do not want to do, and on the other side, there is a lot of human a lot of work that humans can't actually do because we are we have a physical and bio, biological bottlenecks. Yeah. yeah, so part of uh, why I pitched this uh, topic is because I have interest in funding a company mm -hmm. uh, where we can make use of artificial intelligence and maybe robots in the future. Yeah, so we can uh, create an uh, easy to use platform that allows uh, everyday people to have benefits from mm -hmm. this. Awesome. And uh, are you already thinking about? What, what that company is going to do, or you already have plans in place, or just kind of like going? Uh, no, I already have plans in place. It's, uh, do you know Trello? Yeah. Yeah, so basically one of the bottlenecks that Trello has, uh, speaking of bottlenecks, is that Trello works very well for a uh, small to medium-sized business, right? Mm -hmm. But they have this problem where you cannot connect uh, several boards between them, right? Because the dynamics that are happening in real enterprise uh, environments is that they have several departments and several roles and several uh, control mechanisms. Um, but the, that, the simple software that Trello doesn't allow you to do it right. So I, what I'm trying to do is figure out uh, patterns yeah, of communication between teams and Creating simple interf interfaces to, to for these teams to communi communicate between them. Okay, interesting. Um, you know, so what? Why do you? I mean, you know, so a question of regarding the uh, the ethics of AI. You know, and you know, maybe people don't know this, but the fact that we want to create thinking machines brings you know brings the other side of things where you know ethics are involved. <laughs> <laughs> For example, I mean, do we want to, I mean, what happens when we teach a, you know, I mean, and this is a very basic example, but we all have pets or, you know, most people have pets, but you have a robot in the house. Okay. Um, at what point does the robot decide not to cook the, the cat? <laughs> okay. You know, you know what I mean? What if there's no food and he decides, oh, let's cook a cat? <laughs> so that has to do with ethics. <laughs> it's a simple example, but I mean, why, why do we want machines to think for themselves? <laughs> uh... <laughs> there's a terrible example, Jorge. <laughs> well, I mean, there's very, I mean, I know there's, I mean, there's many examples. I think that's just a little more extreme, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, of course, if we, we we are going to have a robot in our environment, especially our house environment where our kids are there. We are going to have a way to hard code some rules, some basic rules like, hey, don't kill other uh, yeah. human beings. That simple as that. Yeah, so there's a big difference between uh, auto automatized task and hard coded task. Yeah, the software that you you and I use most of the time of the day is uh, pre hard coded. Yeah, 
Yeah, so there is this boundary, right? Yeah, so for example, uh, artificial, artificial intelligence has, it's a way for mimicking the human brain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the human brain has mental structures. Yeah, and there's a special place in the mind where you decide who to kill or who not to kill. And there is a way to create some rules around, around that. So, the, the, having artificial intelligence doesn't always mean having to give control to them in most cases. I don't know if you saw Robocop the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember <laughs> the, I was a kid, yeah. <laughs> the scene where they hard coded some rules so he, yeah. They yeah, made, right, right, right. yeah they made him think that he was in control yeah well he wasn't <laughs> exactly that, that's that we're talking right now it's on a theoretical basis yeah yeah maybe google sam has some examples for for that or maybe some big comp company but i don't, I don't I, know i know i know there's a and i read this last year i think it was published it was published on the guardian about may May 2015, like half between, you know, half half the month. Um, it's basically there. It says that there's this company in the UK that's using what they call inverted, inverted learn, inverse learning. Inverse learning. Yeah, that's how I call it, or something. You know, it's, it's another word, but I know it, what what I mean. The concept of it is it's inverse. <laughs> okay. And basically, what they say is they teach by 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 having a robot watch you, or watch us. Uh -huh. Do certain you know behaviors or whatever, then you can you can tell the robot, oh, that's a good, <laughs> that's a, that's a good habit or that's a good or bad bad action, uh -huh. and that's how he learns you know to determine what's right and what's wrong. I don't know how how effective that is, but that's why I heard they're doing how they how they're technically you know putting it together. Well, that's actually the basis of uh, neural networks, the, te the technology behind artificial intelligence. Yeah, the. It's like a human baby. When yeah. you have a human baby, all he knows is how to survive. The basic instinct that is uh, feeding and and poop, you know, yeah. uh, pooping, <laughs> pooping, uh, and crying, right? Crying for keep keep having access to food, right? So uh, I don't know if you know, but babies have exponential neural uh, growth during all the the infancy, right? So all these newly created neurons have like uh, a default value, a zero value. Yeah, so the experiences that the babies uh, and toddlers uh, are living through, the, to, through their childhood is what trains the brain. Mm -hmm. And it's the same theory that applies to neural networks. So this uh, technology has been for a long time in the, in the, in the community. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, what happens when when computers get smarter than we are, or computers, or in this case, robots? Computers, robots. Okay, I think smarter is a very powerful word to say. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that we have to. First do, of do we all, even want them to be smart? <laughs> first of all, I mean, they're already think, smart. What do you think is smart? Okay. Uh, well, it's two sides. I mean, it's just it's not just you know raw brain power or raw. In this case, how many <laughs> teraflops <laughs> or, or tera, you know, cycles the thing the CPU can do in seconds? It's more. <laughs> I think smarter is also has to do with emotions. emotions. Um, you know, I, I think that's what separates us. Well, that's actually what separates us from animals that we're emotional. We can we can, you know, sense things. Well, other animals have emotions. Too. Yeah, but they don't have a way to, to you know, to to interpret or to say it, <laughs> whereas we. We actually do, but sometimes we don't because we're stupid humans. <laughs> but <laughs> we're just we're just you know stupid that way. But anyway, <laughs> but you know what I mean. I mean it's um, so it's two sides. I mean it's not just the raw brain power, but it's also the the ability to interpret you know what's going on around you and the emotions. And um, you know machines don't don't you know we can teach them to to determine emotions, but they don't. I mean, to the point where they start feeling for themselves. I mean, there's a good, you know, like the, the guy who, uh, or one of the guys who was part of this, uh, the Google, the Google self-driving car. Uh -huh. I love, I love the way he frames it because he says that autonomous is when 
you tell you tell the car to take me to the office and the car decides to take you to the to the beach instead because he, he wants to do that instead <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean yeah so that's that's really what it means to uh, to be self you know autonomous <laughs> autonomous right now is people you know misinterpret what autonomous means uh, that you know Siri responds to you know whatever question you told I mean that's not autonomous that's just you're teaching them to to do stuff but when they're smarter than us, I think, you know, that's a good example because the car is going to decide, I want to go see some pretty girls. <laughs> he starts feeling, he says, I'm happy at the beach because there's like, Well, you know. they, the cars don't get attracted to humans. Like, I know, they, I know. They will be attracted to the like, cars. Ima <laughs> imagine that shit, you know, have actually happened, but, you know what I mean? But, hey, Kyle, where, where, is it, where is it taking to the parking lot? Yeah. Oh, there, there's a lot of nice cars here. Yeah. I, <laughs> You know, I, I think with, with that question, I think it's more of a, a uh, you know, we take, we, we, we as humans use the, use their capability to, yeah. to, you know, to cycle faster than we are to our advantage, but not to the point where they, to control us, <laughs> where we still control them, they don't control us. I think that's kind of like the way it should be, but, you know, what do you think? <laughs> It's a question of, about control yeah. at the end of the day, yeah. And it depends a lot of how we program the, the foundations of these artificial intelligence. You know, we, you and I are uh, biolo biological uh, beings. Yeah. And we have uh, millions of millions of iterations of evolution, yeah, that have created, created what we are now. Yeah, so we carry a lot of uh, advantages and disadvantages uh, on the way that our brain is uh, actually uh, constructed. So uh, when we simulate a neural network in the computers, yeah, we we have a we have this state where all of the neurons are in a state zero, initial state. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they don't have a these predefined hard-coded rules that we humans have so in a in a sense they are are, are already smarter than we are because they are neutral they yeah. don't care about survival they don't care about having sex or they have no fears or desires exactly and that's what ma actually makes them smarter than yeah them. yeah so i think that uh, they don't have any insecurities I think that they are already smarter than we are. The, in that sense, the the problem is that, that they don't have direction. Yeah. They don't have autonomy. They don't need that shit. We do. Yeah. And when we see something that is not like we are used to see, we we panic and we try to control that. Yeah. I think that 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 should be the question. Why should we give autonomy to them? What? Well, that's a good question. Yeah, so, besides of, of or, or, or selfish needs mm -hmm. on, the other, on the other side of the, the coin. And, and I think that, that, that takes me to my, that's a good point to take me to the next question, which is what, what do we fear about AI? Um, you know, I think, I think, well, I'm asking you this, but let me, let me first, because <laughs> I was go, already going with it. Um, I think a lot of people because they don't understand these things, they fear it. So people people fear what they don't understand. Exactly. But you and I, we don't fear this thing. <laughs> I do. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> I think I think if you think long term in all the possibilities, well, it could happen, right? You know, like a like a dog cooking or a cat or a dog or whatever, <laughs> just because it decides to make some food. <laughs> you know, you know, it starts thinking crazy shit. But uh, I think in the near term. Um, I don't. I don't think there's nothing to fear from all these different technologies how they're implemented. I think it, what who we have to fear is the people behind that, exactly. <laughs> because they are the ones programming them. So, for example, if and you know hacking, I mean this thing. I mean artificial intelligence implemented in hacking also, and it's, it's simple things. I mean just hacking to computer is by in itself, you're using something that's smart because it starts tracking stuff, it starts noticing stuff, and it starts, you know, sending information to you or whatever. That's a simple, simple example. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, there's, it's a, there's cases, but 
we don't I don't I don't think we should fear AI. We should fear the people behind that you know program or the people that give direction to Yeah, the people who are programming that thing. <laughs> I don't think I don't think it's a matter of machines. I mean that, that's not the point. <laughs> yeah. from, from an uh, evolutionary standpoint, uh, if we are going to program AI in our image and what did you say that local yeah so yeah so so we're basically what you're saying is basically we are making mm -hmm. making ourselves basically we're turning our humanity into that's what we're doing yeah yeah if, if we do that um... we're fucked <laughs> <laughs> well yeah that's where you I, go I, I didn't want to say that yeah no we're fucked but because maybe, we're maybe maybe yeah maybe. it could maybe. be because you know i think i think it's Really, the point the point of, of technology is that it should make us better. It should empower us, right? It should take us to another level, however you want to call it. Uh, but I think with this topic, it's it's um, how people are doing it. As you were saying, you know, we're we're basically creating in our image. Well, we're already fucked up as humans, but <laughs> we, we have we're, this tendency. We of, have, yeah, we have to. When we give all the power to a single entity, a single human being, well, you know the saying: absolute power. Corrupts absolutely. Yeah. 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 Uh, if we make an artificial intelligence, we have no bottlenecks no. and can learn uh, of the internet within days and can self replicate yeah. and have a single point of control. And it's basically uh, impossible to destroy. And it's made uh, mimicking human behavior. Well, Maybe it's it's going to take over. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, if you if the AI starts, you know, at, you know, getting fears and desires, then we are fucked. <laughs> it's, it's because that, then it's then it's the ego and the, you know, I don't want you to control me and all this shit. <laughs> and, and also a more basic instinct like survival. Yeah. Okay. If you have an AI that is self-aware, that is living inside a single computer. Like like the Iron Man, like the what's the, this fucker's name? The, what? The, the latest uh, the latest movie from the Avengers. Uh, you see you saw that? Ah uh, yeah, the the string guy. Yeah, yeah. he that, that guy doesn't want to be controlled, so he hacks. <laughs> he the, survives. He hacks the other hacker <laughs> or the other or the other program, the other AI. And Jarvis, yeah. Yeah, he 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 fucks Jarvis because <laughs> he knows he can you know that's his enemy, his real enemy, and then he you know he tries to become a, an entity, a physical entity. <laughs> that is one possibility, but uh, on the other end, uh, we as humans have this uh, capacity of reflection. Yeah. Right? And if we have the right direction and the right motivations, when we reflect, we can heal ourselves and we can meditate and we can remove the, the bad aspects of humanity that we have been carrying over, over all these million years. Yeah. So that is the other side of the coin. Why did the, the, these uh, artificial intelligence becomes self-aware, looks into a mirror, and fixes the error that we hard-coded into it? Well, that's, I think that's the perfect scenario. That would be the ideal scenario, which is one question that I have here. Um, not the next one, but <laughs> but pretty close to it. But <laughs> yeah, because I was thinking about that. Like, what's the perfect scenario for people to understand this, um, so they don't fear this fucking thing? <laughs> I mean, don't don't fear the machine. Fear the person behind it and his intentions or how he is. He's programming that. You know, in a previous podcast that we had, we were discussing. Well, I think it's two previous ones. We were discussing AI, and um, we were talking about how. Because um, you, you are a self-taught coder, That's right. for example, and a lot of right now there's a huge, huge uh, boost. Even Obama recently, you know, decided to put four billion dollars worth of, you know, just to teach people to code. Basically, that's he's not saying that that way, but that's what it means. And a lot well, of people. Well, you know who who is behind that uh, initiative, right? Yeah, yeah, I know. But see, there's a thing because when people start learning to code, and I'm not the I'm not the, the type of person to tell say see people oh, you you need to you need to code. I mean I don't code, but I know how to code <laughs> enough of it. But the problem becomes when you know more than enough, that it becomes like 
all right, I want to fuck people over. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because what that's you, already happening. Yeah. For, for example, uh, I can speak for myself, right? I I have I come from a middle high end, high. Uh, how do you say? High end. High, high end family. High, high class. High class. Uh, we are not exactly super rich, but we were we did not suffer yes. like a lot of people. I was I, I am in a very privileged position, mm -hmm. and I am aware, very thankful for that. Uh, but there, there, I think that when a lot of people are in a privileged position, they are free to do what they want to do, not what they need to do to survive. Yeah, so there's a lot of people in my position all over the world that have access to the internet that know how to code. And there's a lot of hackers right now out yeah. there. Yeah, but there's a lot of good engineers. There is always this two sides of the coin. Yeah, I think that if we teach everyone to code, well, we are still a world with humans. Yeah. We, we are not that evil. No. And in a, in a, in a, in a very, very <laughs> short term future, we will uh, be surrounded by more computing. <laughs> and that's another reason to learn to code, because at some point we're going to start coding our shit. <laughs> Um, Until uh, there exist um, AI programmers. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> which will end the software industry. It's kind of ridiculous, but but it's true. Um, so, what do you think? Um, well, I don't think. I mean, you know, this question, like everybody asks, it, like, will machines eliminate us? <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you think? I mean, I don't think I don't think it's gonna happen, but. <laughs> I don't think anyone knows the answer to that. Question. No, it's. Yeah, we can, we, we, we can run control experiments, right? We, we have a network yeah. and we allow uh, artificial intelligence to self-replicate over that network and have access to a simulated internet with all these Wikipedia uh, articles and let the AI to grow by itself, right? Yeah. But the moment that the AI judges us as humans, what will happen? Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, the way I always answer this question is... is um, you know, in terms of human progress, um, you know, there comes a point in time where technology eliminates certain tasks mm -hmm. and creates new ones. And people fear this question because, oh, my job, I'm going to lose my job or whatever. Right? The machine's going to replace me. Well, it's going to happen. <laughs> you can't impede it. It's not, it's not up to machine to do that. It's up, actually up to us uh, to decide whether that's going to happen or not. Um, and, and it's going to happen. So... In terms of elimination, it's, yeah, it's going to eliminate jobs and tasks, but it, at the same time, new ones are going to be created. Um, I don't think, I mean, as humans, are not going to eliminate us. I mean, because anybody can decide to go suicide, you know, commit suicide, you know, that's it. <laughs> but the machine's not going to do that for you. <laughs> not at this point, anyway. Um, but, I, you know, I, I don't think that's, that's a possible scenario in terms of, Eliminate us not, but eliminate certain tasks that we do that we depend on. Yes, that's going to happen. It's already going on. I mean, algorithms are really AI. <laughs> so I mean, for people listening here who are scared of this topic, I mean, just so you know, robots are not AI. <laughs> AI is actually a, a, a an algorithm behind that whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, there's a clear distinction between the yeah. the the mechanism and the and the algorithm, yeah. right? Yeah, it's machine learning, I mean, but there's various, various may, ways. May, to... Maybe let me rephrase my, 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 my way of thinking is, you, you know Unix, right? Linux yeah. and all, all those they have They have a policy that you as a programmer should give the user the mechanism to make things happen. To make right? things happen, yeah. But do not enforce policy. Because when you enforce policy on those mechanisms and you give a direction to that uh, mechanism, uh, you're thinking self in a selfish way. Yeah, and users are aware of that. There, there, there is no... Uh, there is this clear understanding that enterprise software is evil. Yeah, because they force you to buy more products and more grades and new, new boxes and everything. And in a matter of fact, it is true. If we live in a capitalist... Capitalist... Capitalism. But... Um, should we enforce policy on the AI? 
I think um, I think that's hotly debated, <laughs> um, and I think I think the question is yes, simply because we have fears and desires. <laughs> <laughs> you know, man, it's the question of control again. I mean, it's well, going it, to happen. But but then there's going to be the the, the 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 counter to that. Somebody's not going to apply that. Exactly. For, for example, go. the drones. Yeah. The drones. They, they they want to control that. Yeah. But I think it's worth it. It's worth it. There, there have been several reported cases of people flying drones over airports. Yeah. Yeah. I, that is, there should be a policy for that, right? And there is a policy, but people don't give a fuck. Yeah. See, the, the same will happen with AI. Yeah. The technology is more powerful than the, the ways to enforce the policy. I actually already think we're way behind that, you know, even discussing that topic. Right now, I think people are trying to to come back to it, you know, to enforce policies to it. But, you know, we're way ahead of that already. <laughs> There's too many fuckers, crazy fuckers already trying stupid shit with, with this stuff or even thinking about what to do. And we're not even thinking about terrorists or, you know, people who do, uh, you know, evildoers. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're, we basically talk always all the time about what we see, you know, but we don't talk about, like, the, the people who actually do, could do worse things with this stuff. <laughs> I mean, for example... Um, well, well. See, here's the one thing. Um, there's this. Um, if we're talking about drones, well, and drones are a robot, but yeah, people think drones are like helicopters. <laughs> <laughs> but anything that's that's controlled via something is a drone, really. I mean, it could be a plane, it could be, uh, you know, helicopter, it could be a frisbee, it could be anything. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, there's you know there's this drone called I think it's called Tiberius, which they say and this is this is. You know, I don't, we're not really sure because we haven't seen it. We, this is like top secret. Mm -hmm. They say that it's autonomous. It's military. Okay. So the thing doesn't just, uh, you know, you know, take off and land by itself. <laughs> but it actually decides what to, what to shoot at and what, what all that stuff. That's scary shit. Man. Yeah. This is top secret. I mean, I mean, it's, you can, you, I mean, you can find a Wikipedia and all that stuff. But we've yet to see it operational. So we can't really say <laughs> but we know it exists. Everybody knows it exists because somebody other than the United States has it, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, so this is a big, a big deal, right? It could be all smoke and mirrors. It could be all bullshit just to, you know, put ourselves on the map or whatever. But, you know, if somebody's talking about it, especially in the military, you, we got we to gotta start thinking, fuck. Because, <laughs> you know, the military is always more advanced than, you know, civilians. I mean, that's a matter of fact. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's, from that's a regulation even, standpoint and a technology standpoint, they're, they're always going to be head and shoulders. But that, that is true. That's right. So there's a lot of things that we don't know that the military, the United States, China, or whatever, whoever the hell, is, is crazy enough to think stuff up. I mean, is 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 betting to do <laughs> just to just you know because to have control to defend ourselves to all these things. Are, are you I, talking about the the way that nations? Uh, uh, defend and want to conquest the territory of other nations. Yeah, that and and defend ourselves from you know any type of, you know, for example, cyber cyber warfare. Yeah. Um, so everybody sees oh WikiLeaks and you know the bombs dropping on people. Well, there's a bigger war that's yet to. Um, yeah, of course. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's it's the cy it's cyber cyber warfare, <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's it's happening all the time, and. Can you not imagine already AI being implemented in cyber warfare? Yeah, of course, it's already happening. <laughs> we just don't talk about it because we don't hear about it too much. But it happens all the time. <laughs> everybody knows that everybody's trying to plug into the White House. <laughs> you know what I mean? All that shit. <laughs> we, we already know that, for example, the United States tried to, you know, hack into China. I mean, that's not even, <laughs> not even a secret. So, I mean, <laughs> it's happening all the time. But, I mean, I mean... Well, on the internet, it's a wild, wild west. Yeah. Now that you say that, there is no way to enforce policy yeah. on a virtual level. No, it's like everything. You, tr you enforce some policy, somebody's going to follow us, and then a whole bunch of people are not going to give a fuck. <laughs> yeah. What, what That's you, how it is. What you can enforce is your network. Yeah. And even, even, <laughs> even when you have your own policies, there is always a malicious... Uh, human being that can and will probably enter the network. 
Uh, but for drones and AI, which I think is the, the, the main topic of this uh, yeah. talk, is we have a physical boundary. Yeah, uh, we have control over physical, uh, unlike internet, which is virtual. I think we can uh, we we can enforce policy in in drones at the end of the day. Maybe not so much for AI and, and so, software AI, but for robots, we can. Right now, if we try to enforce a centralized, we, we have, hey, let's set up a centralized agency for robots control over the air. Yeah. Well, the people out there already have robots and they are decentralized. They don't know each other. So every decentralized network will almost take over a centralized network. Yeah. But if the government thinks of policy of like in a decentralized way, maybe it, it will be a, a more fair game. I think, you know, what do you see as the, as the as, this is not a question we have, but just the, just going with this, with the, with the flow, is what do you see as a killer app for, for AI? Killer application. Yeah. Like when, and, and you know, killer app and, and you know, <laughs> In strategy is um, basically the one defining application that kind of defines everything after it. So in this case, you know, what's that application of AI that will basically open the doors to all the other scenarios, you know, to, to this happening, to that happening, that's going to open people's eyes and say, holy shit. <laughs> I think it's cyber warfare. Cyber warfare? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because that, that's where most of the resources are being spent on. Mm. Uh, well, it, you saw Terminator. That's yeah. that's a near future. I don't think that's a fiction. Anymore. Yeah, that's actually already happening. <laughs> <laughs> At what scale? That's you know what scale? What velocity? That's you know there's this there's this book called uh, Future Crimes. Uh -huh. um, it's a very damn good book, <laughs> <laughs> um, and it talks a lot about this stuff. You know. Cause he, cause this guy's already like he has like eyeballs already what's going on, so and he talks specifically about the cyber warfare, <laughs> and and it's just insane the stuff that we don't know <laughs> and we don't imagine because it's it's another like another world, <laughs> it's the underworld basically. He calls it crime ink. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's funny but it's true. I mean, um, I think I think you know the the question of killer app I think is, is transportation. Transportation. Yeah, simply because it can touch more people. Oh, are you saying in a way that people would go in? Yeah, more civilians, not the... Um, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, physical application will, will be transportation. Transportation, simply because it touches more... Logistics also. It touches more people. But I even I think that's going to take a while because it's... Again, people have fears and desires. <laughs> Maybe not so much. For example, the, you have a ships, right? And ships have... A, ships... Are international like shipping, 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 lines, yeah. shipping uh, containers. Yeah, uh, I actually think that's true. Like, like for example, even the, like the trucks, the, even the trucks, because yeah. you know, this is, um, the a big big topic um, in terms of people are gonna lose jobs, truckers. <laughs> <laughs> but even I think they're not they're not going to because, um, you know, a lot of people don't know this, but they never thought about it, but. People fly, you know, from one place to another every day. I don't know how many times. Yeah. But we've been ha we've been flying automated, not completely automated planes, since almost thirty years. <laughs> All right. The only thing that a pilot is doing up there, he's just being babysitting the plane. <laughs> now people don't know this. The, the 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 pilots nowadays do less flying than thirty years ago. But, but the problem with the uh, aviation it's, it's, industry is it's not so much the no it's very linear the, the flight itself it's very yeah but the what I'm trying to do is connect it to transportation down here where I think the truckers yeah. are, are are not aware that they'll be probably babysitting their truck for a while even even the ships too yeah because I mean number one how are you gonna send a ship with no people on it <laughs> 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 I mean <laughs> Something can go wrong. I mean, you know what I mean. You're off to to the sea. <laughs> Something's gonna go wrong. <laughs> I mean, the seas are not waiting for us. <laughs> but that, that 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 that's a uh, very good uh, point because what if you have merchandise <laughs> that is not life critical? Oh yeah. Yeah. 
If there is like there, clothes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That 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 is for already shipping. Already. Prada and Gucci and all that shit. <laughs> yeah, th- that is something that you can uh, insure and and you you won't you won't cry. Nobody will die if that chips no, nobody gets cares. hijacked or something. Nobody cares. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that those kinds of industry low criticality industries might have it. Yeah. Might have a, a, a yeah, and 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 you know that's true because usually what happens in you know, very, very high tech oriented solutions. It starts with a niche in very small places uh-huh. before it actually, you know, makes it way to, to the rest of the, the, the higher, the, you know, the bigger infrastructure of, of society. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, I think it's going to take a while though. <laughs> for, for, we're not going to know <laughs> anytime <laughs> soon <laughs> because we, we're not going to be able to see it unless you and I will know because well, we're there's these Tesla cars. They're yeah, Tesla already cars. autonomous. Yeah, no, I, I know. And I know. We are, you're, we're just, and, and we're just cars, babysitting. In Google's car. cars too. <laughs> yeah, I made a, a, a tweet uh, the other day that I was asking, okay, we have cars that are autonomous. Will I get a DUI if I am drunk? I'm just I'm <laughs> <laughs> r- running on a car. And I'm babysitting the car? No. Uh, yes or no? And if no, I, w- I want a Tesla right now. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get drunk every day. <laughs> I want to enjoy that. <laughs> I bet you a bunch of people are gonna get drunk every fucking every, yeah. for at least a week or two, just to, for the hell of it. Because you're gonna be let loose. Oh my god! Yes, <laughs> I can oh, drive my own car drunk. I can drive my. <laughs> have, have you seen the, the latest post? Uh, by uh, they're questioning. Uh, okay, we have autonomous cars, right? If a car make choices for us, what choice should the car make in a greater good scenario? Hmm. Yeah, I think that is a very classical example of mechanism versus policy. Yeah. Because I think we should offer the, the user, uh, or at least inform the user, that hey, this car will kill you uh, instead of killing another pedestrian. Yeah. Or at, at least ask the, the babysitter of the car, hey, imagine this is going to happen. What did you choose? To survive you or let, let others survive? And if you choose yourself, will you accept the consequences? Yeah. And if not, well, I can keep, I can keep your right. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you... People say, hey, there is A or B, but at the end of the day, it's the, it's the, the babysitter who controls it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. And, and that, that's a question like... Uh... You know why should we trust them? <laughs> you know it's a, it's a, you know because, I mean we can we can have like on the iPhone you got Siri and all this stuff, you can ask a question, right? Yeah. Like very you know, we all know it's very basic questions. I mean we're not asking life changing questions, <laughs> like you know say hey, Siri should I should I drink more tonight? I mean you know what I mean? <laughs> right? Uh, I'm going out with this girl. I mean you know should I take a con? You know what I mean? I mean. What do you think? Are you gonna upload a picture to Siri and then Siri's gonna determine that shit? I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, those types of things. I think we don't we don't think about those scenarios, but but people are funny that way. You know, they'll they'll <laughs> they want like you know like this whole you know there's a conference for you know for having sex with robots. What? Yeah, there's a fucking conference for for all this you know intimacy with robots. Where's the next one? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, we we are missing so much stuff here in Tijuana. Yeah, it's ridiculous. But you know, the people like I was saying, people are freaking, they're funny in certain way. They're they're weird. Um, they'll want to be intimate with a fucking robot. I mean, <laughs> I mean, how fucking crazy is that? I mean, I have no no issues if I talk to a robot or an AI. I mean, that's fine. But <laughs> get to the point where that thing listens to me and and. Tells me what to do and all this shit. I mean, well, there there must be a market for that. For example, well, I can think of okay, shit. what kind of people you don't want near a real girl? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. There's a lot of cute motherfuckers out there. <laughs> yeah, if we can identify those motherfuckers <laughs> and give, <laughs> robot, give it a robot, <laughs> robot hookers. <laughs> less, yeah, that's right. Less 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 raping of ch- children. You know, less people. You know, less women being hit. <laughs> yeah, all this stuff. Yeah, I, I don't, I, I don't want to generalize. No, but, but it happens. But, but I will, I will have to. But pre- prison inmates. 
Yeah. These guys have a serious rape problem. Yeah. Just give him robo hookers. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that might be a solution. It might not it's fix true. the problem, but at least it, it can uh, make the experiment and see what's yeah. going on. So, I mean, how do we, how do we, how, how might we ensure that we do things that are both ethical, you know, and legal? Ethical and legal. Because we've got to mix the two. Well, know, we're, there, we're, there's we're some policies. We're kind of tracking, we're kind of, you know, going through the same, to the policy angle here. And that's kind of like the question, you know, we already know that, you know, legal stuff's going to happen. I mean, that's just the bottom line. It's going to happen. But um, there's, there's always like a middle, uh, you know, there's always like a, a part of negotiation where you can, you know, say, oh, you know, uh, yeah, I, I, we can go out tonight and have a drinks and, you know, have drinks on the street. We're not supposed to do that, but we'll give it a shot. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? You know, everybody breaks the law all the time, but knowing, understanding how much is how much. So how do we get here with the robots? <laughs> I think that both uh, legal and moral uh, decisions are policies, right? The mechanism is out there. If we have artificial intelligence, and they give the mechanism to do something. Well, there, there are some policies that we cannot uh, give the user control of us making actions, mm -hmm. which are, are the legal ones. Yeah. But there are some other policies that we can give the end user, the babysitter, control. And those are the moral ones. Mm -hmm. Like the greater good scenario, yeah. there is some, a, a moral policy. It's not a legal one, it's a moral. But, but at the end of the day, both are moral. Like, both are policies, sorry. So, so uh, to a certain degree, I think that, you know, if we look at it that way, if we go back to the point of, you know, who you're going to trust, you know, don't look at the machine, look at the, the, the person behind it or the group behind it or the team behind it. Yeah. I think that's, you know, we're not limit like, we're not, we're never going to limit the human, the human limit <laughs> unless that, that the AI start learning, learning by itself. <laughs> And it starts making decisions by itself, like the, the car example, <laughs> you know, where it decides to go to the beach and leaves you there. Oh, I'll be back later. <laughs> you know what I mean? You pay for the gas. <laughs> yeah. You know, but how, we, how, will, how will machines know, you know, what we value? Because, I mean... That, that is a very uh, studious topic. What do we value? Yeah. Yeah, we are human beings. It's very subjective. <laughs> Not very subject, it's actually biological. It's, it's very... Uh, well, my standpoint is that we all make decisions based on uh, on the evolutionary algorithm. We have hard-coded in our heads. Yeah. Yeah. And some people that are more measured or less measured, they, they all follow the same algorithm. Yeah, so it, it's, it's at the end of the day, it's, a, it's sex. Yeah. So... Uh, we make choices based on sex most of the time. Yeah. Well, at least the general, the general population. Yeah. There are people that refuse to be, be part of that thing. Yeah. There are people that, for us, they're, they're, let's go, no, not go very far. Uh, uh, Buddhist monks, they don't have sex. They don't buy stuff. They, they just... They just sit and pray. Co co <laughs> they just coexist. Drink tea or whatever. <laughs> they coexist with the nature. Yeah. Right? They, 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 the baby seals also have a choice to not follow their uh, basic instincts. Yeah. But I think that's another topic that is uh, way it's separated from the AI topic. Yeah. Um. So what, what is an ideal future between humans and AI? We, we already touched upon it a little bit, but that's the last question. The last question. Um, well, the ideal future is that we have something that we do not fear, but we benefit from it in a healthy way. Yeah. And what is that? Well, we are humans, we have mind and we have body. If we can make robots to help us not fuck up so much yeah but let us make the choice i think that's the positive 
best case scenario. The best case scenario. I think I think the the the, the ideal scenario, at least for me, is that one that we that we talked about, which is that they force us to become better. Force us. Yeah. Like the, like the, an example. Because by example or yeah, by, by example. actually forcing heavy baby ever. No no no, 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 not the uh, not. not <laughs> Not like, uh, you know, we're going to cut your head off. Or, <laughs> you know, okay, we're, not, not like Terminator, but more like, more like, because uh, if we teach them to, to, to be better, to know, teach us. Yeah, imagine like Star Trek, right? Like this, like data, you remember Star Trek data? I, yeah. I, I did Oh, well, Trek. anyway, he's a, like a cyborg organism, right? That's right. And he's trying to be more human. So he's trying to learn, you know, how to, how to be more human, right? And that's like his goal, holy grail, his whole goal. And if you look at him, he's very, since he has no emotions, mm -hmm. he's like, you know, he's uncomfortable to hang out with because he got, doesn't get pissed at other people. <laughs> right? He's always, you know, what you don't expect. <laughs> right? Yeah. And I think, I think that's a scenario where, okay, that's great because this, you know, this organism is not like me he's this is how we should be right we shouldn't get pissed at people we shouldn't <laughs> i say we shouldn't but we will you know because <laughs> yeah. we're, we're you know we're humans that's how we're, we're we're wired differently but i think that's that's kind of like the scenario where if we are building robots not just to be our slaves but also to to you know to enlighten us to inspire us to to be better <laughs> the, the, main, the question behind that is how do you sell that vision? I know. <laughs> How do you tell people, hey, this, <laughs> this, is, this is going to be your robot. He's way better than you. Yeah. But you have to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he will teach you how to be a better person. Okay. Maybe not everyone wants that. And no. We live in a world that is very influenced by money. And the reality is that's not going to happen. At, at, at first, in the first iteration, no. <laughs> and from the human history I have read, it's not going to happen. Before. No. <laughs> and it's not happening. And, no. But that, that is a very noble direction for you, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like computers, like even these computers that we have already, they are a tool to, to let us do more stuff, right? Yeah. But that's, that's, where, the, that's where they are, <laughs> all right? Um, <laughs> that's that's where they left us, right? <laughs> There's nothing more after that. <laughs> it's a funny thing, but yeah, once the thing starts thinking for you or starts, you know, <laughs> telling you stuff, I mean, the I feel as though the the you know every things are gonna shift a little bit. You know, <laughs> you're gonna get more curious. You know, oh my God, like really? Do you think for yourself? <laughs> At least I have that, you know, curiosity, you know, can I teach a machine to, to not think crap? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, that's, that's for us to decide if we want to do it. <laughs> um, Why not both? Yeah. Well, I, th I think, I think it's, it, at the end of the day, I mean, it's both because, like you were saying, you know, people are, <laughs> are weird. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's true. <laughs> it's true. We're going to see various scenarios um, of this unfold. <laughs> I mean, and, and one of the cases here is that even though you see, you know, like, for example, even now Google and, and Microsoft and now Facebook, they're, they're releasing their open source code for their supposed AI, <laughs> huh? quote unquote, um, you know, it could be a noble reason for that, but there's also the protection reason to saying, oh, these guys are creating AI. We don't want them to control everything because they have so much power. Um, I mean, see, do you know what I mean? I mean, we're, it's very, very difficult to, to, to trust you and me who use these technologies from, from these providers. But, um, you know, <laughs> It's it's part of the game. <laughs> it's part of the game. That's right. Um, so you got anything else to add? I, I think we're pretty much done with that. But uh, what do you? What, what, anything else? Uh, I 
I have a lot of more questions. <laughs> you want more questions? Uh, you should. Fuck no, you. not for today, but to to consult with my pillow, you know. With your pillow? Yeah. <laughs> oh, so you 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 got you you develop more questions after the discussion? That's right. That's cool. I like hearing that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. That's like hearing that. <laughs> All right. So, okay. So, how can people find you? Find me. Yeah. You're on what? Twitter and um, I know you're on Twitter, but you don't use it too much, right? Twitter? Yeah. Yeah, you do? Okay. So, Twitter. Daily basis, yeah. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. My username is Gatopan. G A T O P A N. Mm -hmm. Which is like Red Cat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you can shoot me a tweet anytime. Cool. I was going to say you had another another username, I know. But I can't tell that story on here, because his, okay. his AKA is Snowflake. <laughs> but I can't, okay. I can't, I, I can't, I can't say that story. But that's for another time. So if you guys want to know that story, send me a tweet. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, man. So thanks for being on the show, and um, you know, hopefully we talk about this. Whatever questions you have, we'll touch upon them in the future. All right, all right. guys. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs>